Hi everybody, Naravi here. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for coming back and checking out this Q&A today. We're going to be going through all of the questions that you guys asked in Discord and on Twitter, and hopefully some of my experience can help you guys to get started streaming and answer any questions you have if you are hesitant to start. So I picked out five of the questions that you guys most commonly asked and I'm gonna go through those questions today. Now, a lot of these questions were also uh, like tech related or uh, focused on social media. So I'm gonna actually answer those questions in a different video. So today we're gonna to start by what are the top five questions that you guys had about just getting started streaming? So number one, what do I need to get started? What were the bare minimum requirements to get started streaming? So. This is different for everybody. And a lot of people think that you need a lot of fancy equipment and a lot, you need to spend a lot of money up front to make your stream look really good and to make yourself stand out. You need to spend a lot of money on graphics and panels and you need to have a mirrorless camera and a XLR microphone and you need to have a really strong PC. And this kind of depends on what you want to do with streaming. But what I would recommend and what I did is I started streaming with what I had. I think the most basic things you need are some sort of camera. You can use the C920, which is, you can get this on sale for like $40. Um, I would recommend you start with a, a webcam. Some people don't want to be on camera and that's perfectly okay, but it's to, it's something that I think is, is more likely to help you see success. So people wanna see your reaction. They wanna be able to have a face-to-face -face with you. They wanna, they wanna get to know you. And I think a camera really helps with that. It's really hard being on camera, but it is something that you kind of get used to and you'll get used to uh, seeing yourself in your VODs and you, you get used to hearing your own voice. It's just something that you get used to. But a lot of people, a lot of viewers really do want to watch a stream with a camera. The number one thing that I think that you need is what you have already. Start with what you have already. If you already have a headset, if you already have a headset with a microphone, start with this. This is what I started with. and. I think before you throw any money at streaming that you should try streaming for at least 30 days before you spend any money on streaming. The one uh, exception to that is you do need a webcam. I think that you can get a C920 for around $50 and I, that's what I would pick up. That's what I'm still using. I'm using the same webcam I bought in 2014. It's a C920. I think I paid like $50 for it. It's, it's pretty cheap and it works great. So I would start with what you have. You can start streaming from your PlayStation or your Xbox if you don't have a computer. Those are all perfectly fine. I think the number one thing is to just start streaming. So don't spend a ton of money on streaming until you know that you like it. Most people are gonna quit streaming within a month. That's just the reality of it. Once you get once you get into it, like a lot of people realize how difficult it is to actually keep streaming. And it, it really depends on what you wanna get out of streaming, so that's for another video. <laughs> Uh, so do you need all these panels? Do you need to have all these social media accounts? Do you need to have any of this stuff? The answer is no. I would say that you should have a few basic panels. You should have an about me panel so people know what you're about. And then you should have your schedule posted so make sure that you set that up in Twitch. But I don't really think that you need a whole lot to get started. You can get free panels online. You can go to like Nerd or Die and just use their free panel generator and that's what you should start with. Um, I think that it's a great way to get started and it allows you to start streaming, which is the most important thing. A lot of people get hung up on the, well, I need to set up my social media accounts. I need to set up my Twitter account first. Okay, well, once I get my Instagram account, yeah, I'll start streaming. I'm, I'm, I'm also gonna start a YouTube channel first to make that set up. And, uh, you know, I gotta wait for this artist to customize my panels. And, oh yeah, I gotta wait for all this equipment to come in. No, the one thing you need to do is start streaming. You need to hit go live because you need to, to just start, to just start. Just do it and then watch your VOD and then start from there, build backwards. If you were a viewer coming into your channel, what would you wanna see? Okay, my audio is garbage. I need to fix that first. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, I need to change the auto-focusing on my camera that's going in and out, in and out, you know, I need to fix that. 
that's what you should be working on first is your first like five or six streams and you just need to get in there you need to stream for an hour or so and just go back and watch your vod and then work your way from there but if you if you are constantly always trying to be like what do i need to do to prepare for streaming you're never actually going to start streaming and that's the important thing to do here so number two what is your best advice for starting out my best overall advice is again just start streaming just try just do it um i think that it's just really important and to just just jump into it if you have a goal of just streaming because you want to try it out definitely just just start it out just do it and pick whatever game you want and just try it uh, if you have a focus of making streaming your full-time job i would say that this advice is a little bit different um I I think that game choice is really important, um, especially early on. I started streaming playing World of Warcraft. Terrible choice. Don't don't play a huge oversaturated game. You're never gonna get found. Nobody's ever gonna see your stream. It doesn't matter how good your stream is. Nobody's ever gonna see it. So game choice is really important. My overall advice would be pick a good game, uh, get some basic equipment, and just start now and watch your VODs because if you don't want to watch your VODs, nobody else wants to watch it either. So definitely those would be my, my top, that's my top advice. <laughs> um, uh, number three, change, uh, what would you have changed early on? Uh, for me, it would have been my game choice. I started streaming World of Warcraft and it was not a great choice. Um, when you're streaming such an oversaturated game, you you're never gonna get found and you're also gonna have to deal with a lot of abuse being at the bottom of a really big directory is just like bait for trolls so it's not a great experience and it can turn people off of streaming really easily so my advice would be to choose a small game that you can show up in the top 8 to 12 streams and start there and I, it, it depends on what you want to stream too and like what you want to do with your channel. So if you want to make Twitch your job someday, you need to be really strategic about these things. If you are just logging in to make some friends and stream with your friends, I think that game choice is a lot less important, but it depends on if you, I mean, everybody wants to grow their stream, right? So game choice is still going to be important. And if you're, if you're picking an oversaturated game or a game that nobody's ever heard of, you're really, really ruining your chances of being found because we all know that discoverability on Twitch is pretty bad. So that's what I would have changed starting out is my game choice. I also would have invested earlier in better audio. So I'm going to cover more of this stuff in my next video, which is going to cover more of the like um, equipment side of streaming. But something I think that's really important early on over anything else is good quality lighting and good audio. So you can get a USB microphone now, um, usually around $100. And that would be my number one first purchase when you get your first twitch payout that's what i would invest in is a decent microphone uh, i streamed with a headset microphone for way too long and now when i go back and look at those clips and the audio it's it's so bad it's so bad so uh, if my camera doesn't look that great it's fine like it's okay but if the audio is bad it's it's really bad so that would be my number one suggestion for you is look at your games and then try to get your audio upgraded as soon as possible number four what was the most challenging aspect of streaming for me it was being able to honestly look at my content and criticize myself um, and to take criticism with a grain of salt and to just really go back and look at my vods and look at my content and try to improve it and really just get in there. It's really hard to watch yourself on camera. It's really hard to see all the things about yourself that other people are seeing. You're like, oh my God, do I really do that? Oh, I say this thing all the time. Oh, does my mouth really do that thing? Like, yeah, it's really hard. Does my voice really sound like that? Everybody thinks these things about themselves, but these are things that you need to ignore. The things that you need to focus on are things that you can improve. The things that you can improve are your audio. Are, are your volume settings good? 
can they hear you properly over the game are your alerts annoying are your you know it, are you keeping up with chat are you entertaining or are you just sitting here like this nobody wants to watch that i'm sorry but it's true so i think just like being able to like get in there and criticize myself was really a hard thing to do and and to learn um another thing that's really challenging on twitch is discoverability and uh we'll talk about this a little bit more in the networking video and the social media side of things but discoverability on twitch is really bad so you need to be smart about your game choice and you need to be smart about your content if i were to i guess if i were to rebrand myself i would try to make my content more family friendly that's something that i personally just I really couldn't do, but that's something that I would suggest for people is to be really smart about the games that you're playing and be really smart about your audience. Um, and then also, yeah, getting in on social medias and YouTube. And these aren't things you need right away in the beginning, but these are definitely things that you're going to have to do eventually to get discovered on Twitch. Uh, the days of being able to just sit there and play video games and magically get followers and subscribers is it's gone. It's not it's not really a thing anymore unless you're unless you're literally like shroud or like a god tier player so it's just not a thing so i think those things are really important and then another thing that's been really hard for me is as somebody who isn't very um i'm not a natural creator i'm not naturally creative so i have to think really hard and i have to keep in mind how to keep my content fresh i have to think of ways to be innovative and to be different and stand out from the crowd um and these things are really hard for me they don't come naturally to me so but these are these are things you can learn these are things that you can practice so don't get discouraged and these are all things that you can you can work on but i found it very challenging like how do i stick out from the crowd how do i show up in this directory how do i get people to click on my stream versus all the other people they could click on. So these are things to think about and something that I found extremely challenging about streaming. Uh, number five, the expectation of streaming versus the reality of streaming. So this is gonna be my own personal uh, anecdotal evidence, but my expectation for streaming was I'm just gonna go into this um, and just see what happens. I was very open-minded about it um, because this is something that I, I'm generally not like that. I'm usually a hardcore planner. I usually, if I'm not good at something, I don't want to do it. And streaming was a new challenge for me and a new way for me to uh, release my creativity. So my expectations for streaming was I was like, if I can get like 10 viewers, I'll be really happy about that. If I can just have some fun and like meet some new people and have a small community that I will enjoy spending time with, I'll be really happy with that. And that's really all I wanted out of streaming. I just wanted to be involved in the gaming scene. Games are something I've loved for so long and I just wanted to be involved. I wanted to, it was more about, I didn't want to be the, like 50, 60 years old and be like, wow, I really wish I had done that. I didn't want to have any regrets. So even if I sucked at streaming, even if I was the worst streamer ever, I at least wanted to be like, I'm going to give this at least six months and see where it goes and that's that was my expectation my reality of streaming was many many hours of work i was not prepared for how much work it was i was not prepared for dealing with social media i was not prepared for the amount of trolling and dms and weirdness and so much uh difficulty it it's really hard but it's also really worth it um just just getting in there and and learning to stream and watching dozens and dozens of youtube videos listening to hours and hours of podcasts it it was so much work but it's been so much it's been so worth it i have met such amazing people i never thought i would have such a an amazing community i never thought i would have such amazing mods and it's been an incredible journey um one thing i i didn't expect that streaming would be so daunting i didn't expect that after two years um i would have such an amazing community but it is a grind it's 
it takes work. I didn't expect that I would be this invested in streaming. So for me to go from, I'm just gonna stream like my raids here and there in World of Warcraft to, oh man, let's let's plan out these community days and let's let's get ready for this game coming out. Let's start a YouTube channel. Like all these things are crazy to me. But the reality is this has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And I think that if it's something that you really wanna do, you should give it a try too. So. I hope that these questions helped you out and we're going to do some more technical questions and we'll also touch on the social media and um, networking side of it. So catch me in the next video and thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye everybody.